So I have the lights off so you can see the LED showing through. It's kind of early morning, a little foggy out there. But I made a Metar map and I got it lit up right now, or it's working right now, showing uh, airports all over Georgia and some extras. Hold on, I'll turn on the lights and we'll look at it. All right, here it is with the lights on, so you can see it's a map. Uh, it's a Georgia air mileage chart that I found on the Georgia Trans uh, Department of Transportation website. They used to print these. Um, I don't know what they still do. Um, they're not for. You're not supposed to use them for actual aeronautical um, or for flying or anything. But um, it was a good map instead of a sectional that had the whole state. And for the most part, this is. Uh, all the airports in Georgia and a few extras that report weather data to make one of these METAR maps. Um, it was uh, a lot of work to do this. Um, there was issues with it and I'll explain more with that. But uh, I saw that a Facebook post for one of these and decided I wanted to make this as a gift for my father who uh, has been a pilot for 50 years um, flying private so uh, I believe I got it complete got the bugs worked out of it and it's about to go to wherever he wants to put it and uh, I'll go over a few things of what I discovered following along the the guides I found and the research I did had to do to make this work um, properly Excuse me. So here's the map that, uh, or the web and the website that the, a METAR map gathers this data from um, using some code. As you can see, these are all airports that report weather, all the, a bunch of them through Georgia and stuff. Uh, each of these have a, a code starting with K and then an airport code that goes after that to to show the data or the data, such as K A. TL, we'll do it decoded, and there's the weather for Hartsville, Atlanta. Um, I originally saw this on a Facebook post, and uh, they had information, uh, but they re they referenced this page, and I'll have all these links in the description. So this guy made a or documented making his own. And I uh, basically, for the most part, followed this, but I found out that he has a lot of holes in his instructions. So you got to download the drivers. Um, you got to install uh, Arduino, and then you got to work on the code and stuff. The code is from GitHub, from this uh, link, and. It works okay, but it wasn't the greatest. I found issues when I went to go upload it. Um, the drivers, I, uh, I don't know what to call it. The drivers and the fast LED in Arduino, they, uh, they're, they've since updated. All right, here's my um, Arduino code. So first off, I'm using Fastlight 3.3. And the ESP core is 2.74. I originally tried to do that, but then it wouldn't load. And I found out that I had to change this data pin from 14 to 5. And that would allow me to upload it. Um, so with all my lights, even including the extra one I got as a logic, it's 96. So you need that here. Uh, what else? I didn't use the light sensor. So down to the code, <clears throat> so I got the first one, I numbered them to help count all of them, make sure I was, my count was right, and named them so I knew where it was, and something else I found was at the end, leave this last comma off, it was in another similar code, they had that in there, so I tried it on this, I don't know if it's making a difference, but my board's working, uh, but pretty much most of what I needed to do to make the board war, uh, to work better was to roll back to these earlier versions of the core and the fast LED. Um, 
and change this data pin to five, like I said. Uh, the uh, other the website instructions covers like the lights, the ones I used are the same type, and then you gotta change this uh, color order. And I think that's about it. All I had to do, I added some of this other stuff in here that wasn't in the original code, just to in case I ever share this or whatever. But uh, I got this figured out. It took a lot of searching and asking online and piecing together uh, what was going on. There, like, there's the where it's pulling the information. I changed mine to every uh, to update every six minutes, which is right here. And it originally starts at a different or 15 minutes, but uh, that's uh it for the this part um all right here's my files uh the instructions from the website say you need this driver but you need this one and this one my computer wouldn't see it till i got this one and then i have all the other files i've gotten some extra ones in case i make some more this is the aeronautical map that i made or this is the PDF of the aeronautical map for Georgia where I pulled out when it loads because it's a big file. The picture itself as a JPEG. There it goes. And then had that printed to 24 by 36 like one of the box stores. Tennessee, South Carolina, Florida, they all have a similar map. Um, that I found out there, I think their respective DOD, DOT websites, Alabama kind of only had this that I could find. Uh, it shows all the airports, but it didn't have that cool aeronautical look like the rest of them. And you can see all my, um, graphics I pulled to put on the map for the SEC teams or college football teams. So I got the board on the table here. Uh, you can see the little stickers are printed out. Uh, it's on clear printer or sticker paper that's like uh, for your printer. I made a bunch of these so like there's uh, the Seminoles. I got Georgia Southern, Auburn, Georgia Tech, Georgia, South Carolina, Clemson, there's my, that sticker didn't really turn out too well because of where I put it and because the, the background's clear, so it's hard to see. Um, put the little emblem there. Uh, let's see, what else to go over? I've made a wood frame and then I bought a snap frame that's 24 by 36. And then I screwed that to the wood frame I made and um, cut out the backing of the uh, snap frame so this fits. You'll see that when I flip it over. But uh, I also added in, you know, like, I actually live near Jacksonville, so I have a lot of the airports in Jacksonville. Um, I threw Tallahassee and some of the um, other Florida uh, uh, airports on here. Um, I got, uh, is that, that's Dothan, I think. Um, and then, like, uh, Hilton Head, um, the Buford Marine Corps Air Station. Columbia threw in an airport for North Carolina since I had, um, like I got Chattanooga up there in the corner uh, just because uh, I was picking up, um, I was trying to use up most of my LED lights. Uh, oh, a word on that, oh, let me grab those. These LED lights come like this on a board. You just break them off and use them. Out of the, my first hundred pack, I probably lost about four or five that didn't work. And I attribute most of that to my sucky original um, soldering iron. That probably caused issues. And then I had to get those because I lost Tallahassee re recently and replaced it. Um, anything else on this side? I did mess up on a few spots, a um, few airports that... 
I thought reported weather that didn't. Uh, so I fixed that and a couple changes like Alabama doesn't have weather, but there's there's a um, another airport nearby that reports weather. So I just put their code in, in place of uh, Alabama's airport code. And then I think it's uh, this airport. Um, it doesn't report weather, so I messed up and drilled a hole. So I want to have a light. So there's the airport right over here in Alabama. That's uh, I'm using that code. But let's go to the back side. These are the lights I used. These are different from what the web page recommended. These were what the uh, Facebook post uh, person said they used. I got these. It involves a lot of soldering, uh, which when I first started my soldering, I had a soldering iron laying around that actually sucked. It was a 60 watt. It was melting itself, so that caused a lot of issues. Uh, I ended up chunking that and getting a, a weller. Uh, and I would, if I had to go back and do it again, I would have probably used a uh, solid core wire. My uh, wire for the board is uh, 22 gauge, and it, it's uh, three different strands, so it's about 70 feet of wire on the back of this. Uh, my Metar board. All right, here's the back of my board and all the wiring. So. I uh, identified all the airports, knocked out um, the holes, and then I uh, basically started at the bottom and started tracing a route for the wiring and numbering all the airports because you gotta, they have to be in order because these are addressable LEDs. Uh, and then you can see where I wrote like the airport codes. When I would knock out the hole and then confirm the airport code, and I wrote that. Um, by each of the hole I knocked out. Uh, I uh, um, hot glued in my lights to make them stable to um, then solder the wires to. Uh, there's my board. I bought a um, USB-C to USB micro 10 foot um, braided cord to go along with this. As you can see I just got um, stationed there. And then on a 2x8 Lego brick with a two 1x8 tiles that are glued to the back of the board. Um, that's hot glued in place and I can actually lift that off. Oh, that popped off. But uh, <clears throat> it'll allow that to come up. And then there was my logic LED that's not, you can't see it from the back side and the tape there to block it in case it didn't it um, acts up now that I got my code to roll back uh, it's actually been blank and I think um, it's just it's not it's not causing an issue because originally it was uh, Jacksonville's airport and it would show different from the rest of the map but uh you can see each light needs three strands of wires and the, like I said it was a lot of soldering with my uh, the weller or uh, not that one. I wish I had that one. That would have made life a whole lot easier. Uh, six connections per light, so it's a lot. Whereas the the tutorial or that website has a um, a set of fifty that are all wired together. You would just have to if you did if you wanted to. Um, you could either cut your wire going through a gap like this, and then splice it back together, or you could just not. Um, whatever number of those lights were in your code put those as null from what i can gather one of these little boards will run up to 300 leds uh it was recommended to have the wall adapter be a five volt to make sure it would provide power uh i was a little worried at first if this was going to work with the number of leds because it's 96 but the facebook um post uh board had a he used 78 or uh, 60, between 60 and 70 LEDs. So I know if he had that many, uh, I should have been, I, I was, should be okay going up this high. Um, you can see I just got it in the snap frame. So it, uh, it was a lot of uh, fixing for using improper tools. I'm going to have that now. And, uh, Figuring out what the issues with the code I was using. 
which apparently the one the code um i am using is is the best out there but i have found a few of the uh little code uh errors that uh to help make it work better and if you have any questions about that let me know and i'll uh, I'll probably put all that in the description since it's a lot. Anyway, thanks.